God, for another opportunity to grace your pulpit. Father, we pray right now, God, that your anointing will rest upon me, upon the word, God, that it will come forth, God, with, 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 with power, that will come forth, God, and change our hearts and empower us to do what thus saith the Lord. And Father, we pray right now, God, against any distractions and anything, God, that will pull me off course. I submit myself to the Holy Ghost to have his way today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 You may be seated. <laughs> All week long, we've been in our anniversary, and the theme of the anniversary is preparing and being empowered for the next. Amen. Preparing and being empowered for the next. And sometimes we might sit down and think to ourselves, well, I heard a lot of stuff this week, Pastor, but uh, where did I fit in in the next? Where's my next? How did I get to a next? How do I know I have a next? Or even we might say to ourselves, you know what? I have messed up so much in the now. I have messed up so much in the past. Do I have a next? Am I going to be a part of this next? I want us to know one thing today from this message, that I don't care where we are in life. Whatever we are facing right now in life, we can be a part of that next. Amen. 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 And our next don't have to be because of the consequences of what we did in the next. Wow. Our next don't have to be predicated on our failures. If we can hear God's voice when he said, if you be willing and obedient, if you repent, then you can be a part of this next. Amen. This is going to be an awesome next. Amen. We might not know everything about it, but it's starting now. Amen. 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 It's starting right now. You can feel it even in the atmosphere, the Amen. next that God has for us. Amen. Amen. I, I, you can find me right quick in Philippians. When, Philipp when Apostle Paul was saying in the Philippians concerning his next. Concerning yeah. some things that he was getting ready to do. And I looked at that and the Lord began to deal with me about that. He said, this is where some of us need to start. You will find me at Philippians 3 and 13. Apostle Paul knew there was a next for him. And I want you to be encouraged to know that there is a next also for you. Can't nobody take your next from you and make you miss your next but you. You can make the choice to say, you know what? I might have missed a lot of nexus, but I ain't missing this one. Wow. Amen. Amen. I might have missed out on a lot of things, and I should Come be on. a lot farther than I am. But I tell you what, I'm starting right now, and I'm going to go into this next, and I'm going to let God empower me for my next, and I'm going to come out of it looking like a brand new me. Amen. 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 Look what Apostle Paul said. And, this, and I looked at it, I said, Lord, you know, I'm so glad that this is where we started. Apostle Paul knew he was getting ready for his next. In verse 13, he said, brethren, I can't, oh, the baby, give me a hand, praise. <laughs> oh, I'm so blessed. I'm so encouraged. He said, he said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I'm not already there. I don't dot all my I's and I don't cross all my T's. I have not apprehended. I haven't gotten to that point. So sometimes we don't take a step towards that next or make or uh, feel like we're qualified that next because we ain't good enough. But we ain't perfect enough because we ain't dotting all our I's and crossing all our T's. Sometimes that next is what you need to be empowered to get the strength you need to dot your I's and to cross your T's. He said, brother, I count not myself to have apprehended. I'm not already there. But this one thing I do. And look at this part because this is the part that has hindered so many of us to going on to our next. He yes. said, forgetting those things that are behind. Yes. Let's stop right there for a minute. Think about that. There's some stuff that we got to forget about. Amen. If we don't forget about those stuff, it will always have power to pull you back. Yes. If you don't forget about some of that stuff, it will always have power to have you second guess your worthiness in God. Yes. If we don't forget about some things that are that are happening right now or that are in our past. We won't move forward the way we need to move forward. He said, forgetting those things which are, are behind. Forget about who hurt you. Come on. Forget about who talked about you. Forget about who didn't support you. Forget about how they made you feel. Forget about what they said about you. They may never come back and repent. They may felt like, well, what am I going to repent for? I meant what I said. You can't be tied to that. Forget about how they felt like that you thought you was all of that in the bag of chips. Forget about all of those things. Forget about how they drug your name through the mud. You know, the songwriter said he's been lied on. 
and so many other things. Forget about those things because they had power to hurt you, but you need to forget those things and take the power from them to keep on hurting you. He said, forgetting those things which are behind. He said, I am reaching forward unto those things that are before me. Come on. And the only way he can reach forward to those things that are before him and be prepared for this new and next level was he had to forget some things. Yes, yes. He said, I press, verse 14. He said, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Only way you can do that is you release yourself. Yes. Amen. You forget about some things. And guess what? Release some people that have me apologize. Amen. Pray for some people that did not pray for you. Yes. Pray for some people that intentionally hurt you. Even pray for them that are still talking about you like a dog. Well, Amen. Pray for them that don't want to see you make it. Don't want to see you to go forth and to be successful. Pray for them. Yes. It's for your benefit. Amen. Amen. He said, I'm reaching forward. I'm pressing forward to my necks that I'm not holding grudges. That's important for being empowered. That's important for getting ready for this next. You can't go in this next holding grudges. You got to shake off some stuff. It ain't about them. It ain't about that. It ain't about what you didn't achieve. It ain't about how many times you fail. If you got up and dusted yourself off and you asked God to forgive you, get ready for your next and move Amen. on forward. Pastor Paul said he's reaching there and he's reaching for the prize of a high calling in Christ Jesus. You don't have a right to say I'm not qualified when God say I am. You are qualified. Amen. Amen. If you repented and you got cleaned up, how come we feel like we ain't worthy? Wow. The word of God said he is faithful to forgive us of all of our sins Amen. and cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness. Yes. So we don't have a right to do that. You're going to find me again. I'm not going to be before you very long, but I just want to encourage your heart so you don't miss out on the next. Yes. Amen. The miss too many times moving forward. Yes. It's yours. Can't nobody take it from you but you. The enemy going to try to rock you and shake you and make you feel like you ain't worthy, but you're worthy. Yes. You will find me in the book of Acts and look at what Jesus has said to his apostles concerning their necks. Yes. Acts 1 is where I'm going to be at. Verse 2, it says, until the day in which he was taken up, after that through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Mm -hmm. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many fallible proofs. Being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Mm. Not many days hence. Verse 6, when they therefore will come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the season which the father had put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jer Jerusalem in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Yes. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Here in Acts 1, we looking at Jesus, who had been on earth 40 days after his resurrection. Uh -huh. After some people say he would never rise again. Right. After he was dead and buried and in the grave for three days. Right. He was on earth for 40 days when he was resurrected. Yes. Okay, now that was a time when, you know, uh, uh, Mary and them tried to touch him. He said, don't touch me. I haven't gone to the Father. But then there came a time when he told Thomas that you can go ahead and touch me. He was touchable. Yes. In those 40 days. Yes. In those 40 days that he was here on earth after his resurrection, he preached to him. Yes. He talked to him. Yes. He sat down and ate with him. Woo! Yes. 
He did all of those things with them, and he was preparing them for the next. Yes. Now, here he was on the 40th day getting ready to ascend unto heaven, getting ready to go to his next, which his next was to be seated on the right hand of the Father, yes. to become the advocate for you. Yes. And to make intercession to God for you. Yes. That was his next. He was telling him, this is what I'm getting ready to do. But your next is to go back to Jerusalem and don't leave there. Go in the upper room and don't come out of that upper room until you have been endowed with power on high. Yes. Don't come out until you have received the promise that God gave you. Sometimes we leave a little bit too soon. We get discouraged. We let the enemy rock us and shake us and make us feel unworthy. And we leave before the power comes. We leave before the promise comes. He told him, he said, you go back there and you go in that upper room and don't you leave there until the parakeet comes. Until the comforter comes. Until the Holy Ghost comes. This is your next move. And we all know what happened. These men and women went back to Jerusalem and they got in that upper room and the Bible says that they began to pray and there was on one accord and they began to make supplication and as you dig a little bit deeper some of them began, began to do self introspection yes. in that upper room yes. and they stayed there and they did not leave that upper room for 10 whole days 10 whole days Pentecost came on the ninth day but it did not fully come to on the 10th day. And we know what happened when the day of Pentecost had fully come. But they followed the instruction because they wanted to be a part of that next. It was 120 of them. Let's say five would have left. They would have missed that part of their next. Don't let nothing make you fall short of your next. You deserve it because God said you're worthy. When he looked at he said you're worthy. Don't let no demon in hell, don't let nobody say that you ain't worthy. Amen. Not even yourself. Amen. Acts 2, verse 1. And this is talking about the 10th day, because we know Pentecost came on the ninth day after they had gotten back up there. Right. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were praying. They were making supplication. They were making self-introspection. They was on one accord. They was in there. They was about business. They knew what they were there for, and they were serious about what they were doing. Why? Because Jesus told us that this is your next. Because I'm telling you, when Jesus ascended to heaven, someone could have went on home. Come on. They could have looked and said, "Well, my hope is gone." They could have said, "Well, Jesus is gone. So what? Take us. Why did we go back to Jerusalem? Wow. You went back to Jerusalem because Jesus said it." That's where the part about being obedient is. Follow through even if you don't understand it. They didn't know nothing about the paraclete. They didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost. They didn't know nothing about the comfort. But what Jesus told them. Yes. And they went there looking for what Jesus had told them to go there and wait for. Yes. And verse 2 it said, then suddenly, how many know your next level don't have to take a long time? Come on. Woo. How many know there's some sudden things that God wants to do in your life? How many know there's some sudden things that's going to happen in your life? How many know that you could leave out here today at the time you get home, everything is changed? Amen. Any given moment, my God can change my situation, Amen. can change my circumstance. What I'm wrestling with, what I'm struggling with, ain't but a phone call away. Amen. What I'm wrestling with, all I'm struggling with, ain't nothing but a word away. When God said, done, it's done. Amen. Woo. He will line people up to get it done, and they'll call you and tell you about it. Woman testimony blessed yeah. me so much last night. Woo! Yeah. She talked about how she was trying to buy the trailer and uh, buy this here um, double wide. Mm -hmm. And um, she got the call from, 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 I guess, one of the people that own the double wide or whatever. Said, come on down. Said, you still want to buy it? Said, come on down and bring your paperwork. And so she didn't come that first day because she thought to herself, well, I got to get about three to $5,000 ready for the down payment. And so when she didn't come, I'm sharing her testimony. When she didn't come, the woman called her and said, why didn't you come? And so she got together what she could get together and came. And then when she got there, she found out one thing. She, uh, no, she said she didn't have the money. Then the woman said, you don't need it. This has been gifted to you. Yes. Woo! Amen. You don't know how God is working this thing out Amen. for us. Somebody could be getting ready to gift you with something. Somebody could be ready. Somebody may be getting ready to change some things for you. 
And the only thing you got to do is be in a position to receive it. And if we're in a position to receive it, then we will receive what thus saith the Lord. Amen. I think the battery going down to this here uh, 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 thing. I'll get my mic. Oh. <laughs> I'm not used to Facebook Live, y'all. Not by myself. But it blessed me so much when she shared that testimony. And I hope me sharing that testimony with us today will encourage us that God is behind the scene and he's working things out for you even when you don't even think you were. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. We got so many people judging us as not being worthy. Let's start judging ourselves as being worthy. Yes. Come on. Amen. Let's not agree with them. Let's read on. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house that was sitting there. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know, I want to stop right here and focus on some things. I know this is talking about being baptized in the Holy Ghost, and I'll tell anybody, if you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, Get baptized in the Holy Ghost because it will strengthen you, it will empower you, it will help you to do the things that you need to do. Amen. But I want to stop and, 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 and focus on the importance of some of us being empowered to speak a new language. Wow. I'm talking about the need for some of us to go back into the upper room experience with faith and with prayer and change our language about some things. Because until we change our language about some things, we're not going to be ready for it, be empowered for that next level. Especially the language that we speak sometimes when we're frustrated. When we're discouraged, I just throw my hands up, I give it up, I'm quick, I'm tired. Who told us to quit? Who told us to speak tired over it? Who told us to speak that this ain't going to happen? We're speaking all this negativity over something that God has ordained. We're speaking all this negativity over because the tower don't look like a tower. But he prophesied to me that I will be, uh, I will have a tower. Every good tower starts with foundation work. And because it don't look like the mature thing, you can't receive it in its infancy. When Jesus came, he didn't look like what some people thought he didn't look, he should look like, or he didn't come like what some people thought he should come like, so they didn't receive him. And look at what they missed out on. You have, the, we, not you. We have got to learn to change our speech. Yes. I remember my mom used to tell me, say, if you can't say it, I'm good, don't say nothing at all. Especially when you're talking about yourself. Amen. When you're talking about the plan and the purpose of God in you. When you're talking about what, what somebody had prophesied over you. When you're talking about the goodness in you. If you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing bad at all. Come on. Just hum. Just sing praises. Amen. Amen. Mama did a lot of humming. I'm wondering about it sometimes. Amen. <laughs> I wonder she didn't say nothing but she was humming I'm thinking to myself did I do something bad <laughs> we had we had to come to the point of stop speaking the negative words agree with the positive because when we're speaking the negative words we're coming to agreement with what the enemy said Amen. God said you shall do it and the enemy said no they won't who are we going to agree with God shall, said it shall come to pass but the enemy said it won't come to pass who are we going to agree with? God said, I'm going to send you everything you need. I'm going to send you money. I'm going to send you supplies. I'm going to send you people that will help you. And we say to ourselves, when we get frustrated, it just ain't going to work out. Who are we agreeing with? Come to the point of understanding, Lord, my, my vision and my baby is still in the infant stage. And it don't look like the mature stage. But help me to continue to walk this thing through until it comes to fruition. Some of us got to go back to that 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 that, that upper room experience, so we can change our language, so we can be prepared for our next. Amen. We need to change our language, so we can come from doubt, fear, and unbelief to the place of faith, hope, and assurity that God's going to do this thing. Why? Because the Bible lets us know that He inhabits the praises yes. of His people. Amen. It lets us know that, you know, when we begin to praise him, regardless of what the situation is, that we're inviting in the way maker. Remember the songwriter? The miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light in darkness. When we begin to, when we as believers begin to praise God, 
versus murmuring and complaining and doubt and belief when we doubt and unbelief when we begin to praise God we're inviting light into the darkness we're inviting life into dead circumstances what it looked like it's dead to me just begin to praise and witness Amen. that's what the Bible said in, 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 in the book of in, uh, Acts 2 that they became witnesses of him witness what God's going to do witness what God has said praise him for what he's going to do Bring life to that dead situation. When we praise God, we can bring hope to the hopeless situation. Amen. When we give God the glory, we're inviting him to come in and change our situation and prepare us for the next. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Learn how to praise him before we kill it out. Amen. And it won't be good for nothing. Amen. God said, I told you to build a tower, but where the tower at? Come on. I told you to build an empire, but where the empire at? I told you to build a youth center. I told you to build a church. I told you to build whatever, but where are those things at? Because they did not come through the way that you thought it was going to come through. Now you're upset because it didn't come through in the way we thought it would come through. We have to change our language to be ready for this next level. Because if we don't change our language to be ready for this next level, the devil ain't going to kill it, you will. And we'll sit there after we have killed it with our words and with our mouth and with the things that we said and our negativity. And we'll sit there and say, look at what the devil did. Hallelujah. Back to that, that part of the scripture that shows how the enemy can't even curse us. Amen. We have to come to the point that he can't take nothing from me without me giving it to him. Giving him a door open to come in and do what he wants to do. We have to change our language. On the day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, the language of the people changed. And I know it was talking about the evidence of the Holy Ghost, but we need to change our language too. Amen. 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 And we're not just talking about that. There's so many things that we need to do to get ready and be prepared for that next level. One of the things what we said, well, forget those things that are behind. Yes. Forget some stuff. They ain't never apologize to me, so what? So what? What you holding on to them for? Some of them is dead and buried and you still holding on what they did. You done got up. God done healed you some. Go ahead and receive the rest of your healing. Sometimes we don't receive the rest of our healing because we're so busy nursing what they did. Amen. We're so busy holding on to what they did, what they said, how they acted. Amen. So busy holding on to what they're still talking about me. Let the Lord handle those things. Amen. Because if you're going to get to that next, you have got to let go some things and you've got to change some language. Amen. 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 Let's look again in the script. Well, no, we're not going to go to the scripture. Uh, I want to talk to you about another area about the children of Israel. They was getting ready for a next. They was preparing to go into the promised land. They had a lot of next. They got the first next was coming out of Egypt and going into their journey. Yes. That was the next. The Bible shows that they was in the, in the wilderness for 40 years. And in those 40 years, they camped out 42 times. And each time, there came a time when God would tell them, say, okay, you have been here long enough, it's time to break camp. Time to get up and move a little bit further. Sometimes God speaks to us and let us know you've been in the position that you're in right now a little too long. It's time for you to break camp. It's time for you to get up and do something else. It's time for you to get up and move in another direction. You have been here too long. You almost became a squatter there. It's time to get up. And sometimes we don't want to move because we don't got comfortable where we are. Lord, you mean tell me I got to break camp and I just got this tent the way I want to get it? I got the tent turned in a direction and the wind blows in a certain direction. God, I don't think I want to break camp. Do you can stay there? Amen. Now I'm just teasing you. <laughs> but that come a time, came a time 42 times they camped out. And each time the Lord would tell them, say, it's time to break camp and come on a little bit further to your promise. That's your next level. And we all know about how the first time when they came to the promise, they couldn't go into the promise because they didn't have the faith for that next level. They didn't have the faith to be empowered to go in there and kill the giants. They didn't have the faith to be able to receive. And that's another hindrance that will hinder you from this next level. What's your faith like? If you 
you go to that next level and there's some giants with your faith saying to you. Come on. Their faith did not believe that they could go in there and conquer that land, even though it was flowing with milk and honey and grapes big as your head. They didn't believe that they could go in there, even though God said that he would, they could go in and do it. What is God saying about you that you don't believe? What is God saying about your empowerment that you won't grab a hold of, and because you won't grab a hold of it, you can't go to the next level? What is God saying about your empowerment, but Aunt Lucy Bell said something else, and so you're holding on to what Aunt Lucy Bell said versus what God has said. You better check off what Aunt Lucy Bell said, because Aunt Lucy Bell was speaking from the flesh. Yes. Amen. Aunt Lucy Bell was sp speaking about little John, and she knew who up all mean yes. and everything. Yes. But now that you are a grown man and a grown woman, we need to check off some things and understand, I am who God says I am. Yes. Hallelujah. Songwriter said, more than a conqueror. Yes, that's just who I am. Amen. Glory to God. So they ended up not moving forward to the next level, but they had to move backwards and go back into the wilderness. And the history records that they stayed in the wilderness until that unfaithful generation died off. Then there came a time when they came wow. back to the promise. Sometime God will bring them back around. This time when they came back to the promise, they were ready. They were ready to go in. That Joshua generation was ready to go in. Hallelujah. They've been out in that wilderness long enough. It's something about the wilderness that will whip you in shape. Yes. If you let it, it'll whip you in shape. Amen. They came back to that promise and they stood at the mouth of the promise and the Lord said, now, okay, we get ready to go into this promised land. We get ready to go to this next level. We get ready to go to this next empowerment. And what I want you to do, look at what he said to them. He said, tell us the same thing. He said, the first thing I need you to do when you go in there is to drive out the inhabitants of the land. Yes. I want us to understand as we're getting ready to go into our, our next, our enemy is already there. Amen. He is already there waiting to pull you down and to tear you down. Sometimes we think just because Pharaoh's army got drowned in the Red Sea that that's it. That's all our enemies. It would have been a shame if that's what they thought because they would have forgotten about all the ites, the Jebusites, the Canaanites, and all the other yes. ites. You ain't just got one enemy, and your enemy will continue to show up unless God tell you like what he told the Israelites, that this enemy you see today, you won't see no more. But some of them you won't see again. Amen. And some of them are going to be right there waiting on you when you're ready to go into your promise. If you don't believe me, get something. If you don't believe me, do something good. Your enemy will be right there trying to discourage you in what God has done already for you. But he told him, he said, I'm going to tell you right now, when you go there, the first thing I want you to do is to drive out your enemy because he's there. You cannot let them stay there. If you allow them to remain, the scripture said that they will be a thorn in your flesh. And one part of it said they'll be like needles in your eyes. And when I read that, I said, I can't even imagine it. But they'll be like needles in your eyes and thorns in your flesh. Draw them out. Why? Because you got the power to draw them out. Why? Because you're stronger than them. Come on. One time when Jesus was taking them, when God was leading them around, he said, don't bother such and such. You're greater than them and they're scared of you. Wow. Don't you know that the enemy is scared that you will understand your power? He is scared that you will understand your authority. He's scared that you will step up and whoop his butt like you can whoop his butt. He's scared that you will believe what God said about you. Stand up when you're going to that next level and understand I'm more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ Jesus because he has strengthened me. Glory be to God. Another commentary broke it down. He said that they, if we don't draw them out, they'll be cause us continual spiritual problems. In that next level, you don't want to have continual spiritual problems. Continual spiritual problems that will hinder and breach your relationship between you and God and between you and your plan. God's plan with you, and it'll never get off the ground. It would never look like the mature prophecy that God gave you. It would still look like the baby prophecy, even though you're trying to work on it. Why? Because you still got the inhibitors in that land. You didn't drive them enemies out of the land because you was empowered to do it. 
That prophet lied. No, that prophet didn't lie. You didn't do the grunt work. Come on. You didn't do the sweat equity. You didn't dig out the foundation before you started to try to build the tower. There are some things that we have got to do to prepare us and to empower us for that next level. Next thing that that um, commentator said, said they will harass your military forces. Ooh, your prayer life will be hindered. If you don't drive them out, it will hinder your prayer life and it will take away the power of your warfare. You'll be binding and loosening and seem like ain't nothing bound and ain't nothing loose. You be bonding the devil up and he'll be running just as hard as he were running as before. And you be thinking to yourself, it seems like I'm just speaking words. You'll be speaking just words until you come to the point of driving out the inhibitors of the land. And the third thing, he said what God had purposed to do to them, he now had to add you. I don't want the Lord to have to add me in that. He get ready to judge them and he had to, to add me in because I'm parting with him. He had to add me in because I didn't make a difference between them and me. I didn't draw the line in the sand. I didn't draw them out like he told me to draw them. But I thought, I thought, well, this seemed nice enough. Ain't no harm in them. They got the good Kool-Aid over there. They got the red Kool-Aid over there. And they got the hostess Twinkies over there. So I'm going to just go over there and maybe get me a cup of Kool-Aid and some Twinkie. But you're partaking with it. You're not driving them out. You're keeping that thing going. You're keeping that thing empowered against you. You're keeping that thing stopping you from moving forward. Amen. These are some things that the Lord said to us concerning us being empowered and getting ready for that next move. Forget some things. Change your language. Drive out that enemy. Don't take nothing for granted. I don't care how easy it looks. I don't care how friendly the, act, if the situation seems. Well, it just don't bother my spirit. Then if it's wrong and it's against God and the word of God is against it, then you need to check your spirit. Amen? Because your spirit should be agreeing with the word of God and not with the will of man. We see so many things that's okay in this country, but it shouldn't be okay in our spirit. Just because this country says it's okay, don't mean that God is saying it's okay. We have to make a difference about some things. Amen? In closing, I told y'all we're going to be long. There's some other things that the Lord spoke to me that he wants us to know about in our next level. And he wants us to be aware and beware. Aware of some things and beware, be cautious about some things. Number one, he said in our next level, our purpose in God is going to be so loaded with works. Wow. But the Lord is saying to us, he said, be wise and discerning to know what is kingdom works, what is busy works, church and church and church and all the other good stuff that you do, and what is works of the flesh. Come on. Come on. Only one would get the reward, and that's kingdom works. Amen. Be Concerning, be discerning what kind of works it is. You can't jump on the bandwagon with everybody and everything simply because they stop by and say, well, we're going to do this here. You need to pray about it. You need to ask God about it. God, do you want me to get involved in this? Because it may take up so much of my time. It may take me out of commission for doing real kingdom work. And if it takes you out of commission to do a real kingdom work, then the enemy has won. He has pulled you off the wall. Number two. Beware that the spirit of Delilah, and I'm talking to the men folk right now, the spirit of Delilah Bell, which is the spirit of Delilah and Jezebel, the spirit of Delilah saw you when you took that jawbone of that donkey and killed that lion. He saw you and he don't like it. So he tried to take you out of commission. Understand with women what is your assignment and what is not your assignment. Because they are trying to take you out of commission. I'm, I'm, I'm talking oh. right. Yes. Know when you need to go in somewhere and know when you need to send your wife. Know when you need to go in somewhere and know when you need to send one of the mothers of the church. Or one of the missionaries. Or one of the sisters. Don't let the enemy deceive you at this level. Because he's going at your anointing. And he'll have the most pretty woman that you ever seen dressed up just like you like him. You won't tell nobody that's what you like, but he knows. 
and he'll send her in there that I need some counsel. <laughs> and you said, well, did you talk to my wife? Yeah, but she, she just don't understand. Use some wisdom in this area. The Lila Bell is out there in this level, and I'm serious. Open your ears. Many strong Samson's are falling. Yeah. It is a detriment to the church. When the strong Samson's are falling, the sheep are hurt. The sheep are confused, and they don't know what's going on. When the strong Samson's are laying with the sheep, there is a problem. Amen. Now let's look also at the females. There is a Casanova spirit. I'm telling you what the Lord is saying to me. That is out there and he knows that you're lonely. And that's for singles and married. My husband just don't understand me. Can you come by and talk to him? No. <laughs> Amen. A Casanova spirit is looking for those that are lonely, whether they're married or single, or looking for those that have low self-esteem. Be aware of that. And beware. Amen. Amen. Beware of somebody calling you on the phone. Uh, Sister Lucy, the Lord told me to come by and talk to you. And uh, I'm out here and I got a co couple with me. <laughs> no, I got a Pepsi with me. <laughs> Oh no, I like I'm so I didn't mean like that. Oh brother, you gotta forgive me. I'm just giving it to you like the Lord was giving it to me. We gotta be aware and we gotta beware. I gotta cope with it. You need to holler out to him, bro Jack. Did the Lord send Sister Jackie with you? No. Then the Lord didn't send you. Amen. I want to tell a, a story when I, I, I live single and saved. That's how come I can talk about this here. You can do it. Amen. When I got saved and gave my life to the Lord, that was this dude decide that he would come up my house. Saturday morning, go come up my house. And uh, <laughs> y'all, I'm not going to look at him. <laughs> he was going to come up my house. And so he rode on up there. And so I sit in the house, my car was in the yard. I sit in the house and I said, well, if I don't answer the door, he'll think I'm not home and he'll just go on and leave me alone. But the Lord dropped in my spirit. So you need to make a statement. See, because if he think you're not home, he ain't going to leave you alone. He's going to keep coming back, keep coming back. You need to let him know you're home and you ain't opening the door. So what I did, y'all, I don't know y'all know it. I had a picture window in my living room. I pulled the curtain open wide as I could pull it. And I put my whole body in that picture window. And I'm looking at him knocking, and he's looking at me like, and he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him. <laughs> After a while, he went like that and went on got in his car and left. You know that nut went around and told everybody that I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and my aunt heard it. Missionary Dickens, I know some of y'all might know her. She's gone home with the Lord, but she heard him, and she told him, said, she ain't crazy. So that's what salvation looked like. That's what being saved look like. I'm standing in the window that sending you a message. You can knock all you want to, but I'm not opening this door. I didn't even like him no way. <laughs> but these are some things that God is warning us about to be aware of. It was a, a number three. He said, understand that in the past, Satan has bogged down many men and women of God who are trying to answer all of the calls. Overworking them, trying to answer all of the calls, calls that belong to them and calls that belong to others who are lazy and not doing their job. He said, choose and understand which calls is yours to answer. Help what you can help, but don't get so burnt out that your own ministry suffers. Okay. Don't get so burnt out that you can't, don't have no juice to come forth and do what you need to do right. and what he's going to be asking you to show for your head. Number four, he said, when you see people that are drowning in the floods of life and on their way to hell, understand this fact, some you give a little help to. The Bible says some will plant a seed, another water, and he'll add an increase. He said, but also understand that there will be some that you'll give a lot of help to. You will plant the seed, 
You will water the seed. You will cultivate the seed. You will nurture the seed. You will do whatever you have to do to that seed because that's your assignment. You can't get off your assignment until God takes you off that assignment. Amen. You don't want to lose that person while you while they're in your assignment. And in God, you will add the increase. Number five. He said, guard yourself against distractions. Anything, anybody that can pull your attention away from what you need to be doing, can pull your attention even away from your first love, you need to put it in its place. Amen. Amen. You need to straighten it out. Don't let nothing distract you in any way, shape, or form. And the bad part about it, Apostle and I, we're relationship teachers. We have to sometimes talk to people about straightening out this stuff in the marriage. Nobody should be higher to him on this earth than me. Talk about it. And nobody should be higher on this earth to me than him. If it's not in its right place, it's going to be some wrong. Right. There's a breach in the alignment. Yes. And when there's a breach in the alignment in relationships, the enemy can't get in. Yes. You have to make sure everything is tight and straight with each other. Yes. Don't get distracted because even that can cause a distraction between you and God. Absolutely. Well, how is that going to happen? That's between me and apostle. That's between you and apostle and God. Absolutely. We have to make sure that our love for God is in its right place. Right, first. Amen. <laughs> we have to make sure that God is our first. He asked this here, and, and he said to me, even with this one, he said to me, I'm going to be looking for my love. Yes. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. He may test us some to see where our love is. Y'all remember how he said to Peter in them 40 days that he was here on earth after he had resurrected. When he was ministering them 40 days, he had a conversation with Peter. He said, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Thou knowest I love you. Feed my lamb. He said also, by this shall all men know that you are my son if you have love for the brother. But also, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So he's going to test our love. So don't let things distract in that area. Whether it's physical, whether it's material, human being, or not human being. Don't let nothing bring a distraction between you and what you're supposed to be doing in God in this level. There are so many things that God wants to do for us in this particular level. So many changes. We look at ourselves today, we could take a photograph of us. And by next year, this time, if we do it right, we won't even know ourselves. Wow. We won't even look the same. We won't even act the same. Amen. Amen. But it's all into the decisions that we make. We can be a part of this next level. We don't have to sit back and act like, well, everybody's deserting me. No. They can't stand and wait. I can't wait on you. You can't wait on me. We have to answer the call for ourselves. We have to answer the call right now because there's an urgency in the spirit. If your bestest don't want to go, pray for them, but you got to go anyway. My husband's coming with me and I'm going with him, but if your spouse don't want to go, pray for them, but you got to go. There's an urgency in the spirit. Some things you have to shake off because they'll hold you down and you don't want those things holding you down. You want to be able to sit. God is building a war. He's building an army. And this next level has a lot to do with that. And you want to be a part of that. But it makes, takes decisions that you're making that's going to take you where you need to go. In closing, the gist of what God is saying, he said to us also, be discerning, but not judgmental. Mm. <laughs> Got too many judgmental Christians around and ain't doing no work. That's what he said in my good ear. <laughs> Too many judgmental Christians around that's not doing any work. They judge Jesus because he said they were the sinners and the publican. But what did he say? He said, I didn't come for the well. I came because there were some sick people that needed to be healed. There's some bound up people that need some deliverance. Amen. Sometimes people are going to look at you funny because of some things that God gives you the assignment to do. Do your assignment. And you change that person. 
change that situation. But if that situation starts to change you, you got to back up. Amen. Amen. Next, he said, be cautious, but not paranoid. Be cautious about things. Beware about some things. Be aware about some things. But don't come to the point of being paranoid. Not everybody's out to get you, even though some are assigned to. Know which one is which. Because you're going to deny some help to people that God is trying to get you to help. Amen. And he got to deal with me about that one. Because, you know, I'm looking at people with 40s and 50s and 60s on, you know. And when I get this, <laughs> I tell people that I got my 40s on 2020 in the natural and 2020 in the spirit. That's my 40s. That's not that big beer bottle that people got. It's my 40s. I look and I holler. I say, I got my 40s on. That means I'm watching in the spirit. And I got my radar on. And I'm watching even in the natural. But sometimes you get so paranoid, you got your 60s on. 2020 in the spirit, 2020 in the natural, 2020 from somewhere else. Fear and from the flesh. The next thing he said, he said, submit yourself to be a worker and not be worked. Submit yourself to be a worker and not to be worked. There are some people that can work you... Oh my God. They come forth like they are whatever. And they can work you to the point where you ain't no good for nothing and nobody else. And they know how to do it. And they know how to manipulate. They know how to get done what they want to get done. And before you know it, you don't give them everything. Give them only what God said give them. Don't go past what the Lord said do. He said to me, he said, this is how come so many men and women have gotten hurt because they went further than the Holy Ghost said to do. The Holy Ghost ain't going to lead you nowhere where you get wiped out, where you get burnt out, where you get hurt and destroyed. The Holy Ghost is saying, back up. Let it alone now. Let that bird see if they can fly. Let it alone. You don't pour enough into them. Let it alone. You don't, you don't work enough in that area. Let's see what's happening. Let's see if they'll stand and let's see if they'll do what does say the Lord. So it comes a time in this season in order for us to meet that level and go to that level, we have to be discerning. Amen? Amen. That's all I have. I am finished. I just want all of us to hear everything that the Lord is saying to us. And if we hear everything that God is saying to us, I guarantee you, we'll be blessed spiritually and we'll be blessed naturally. Amen? Amen? Is there any questions? God bless you. Let us stand on our feet. I thank everybody on Facebook Live for praying with me and praying for me. It's not my cup of tea to be on Facebook Live. I'll be up there with Apostle, but I don't like being up there by myself. And sometimes I struggle even being up there with Apostle. But y'all pray for me because God is going to have to help me in that area. Oh, my husband said, don't say that. <laughs> Come on over here and say something to me. I don't know if you say something. Here he is. He's been sitting on the sideline saying stuff. Pray for y'all. Uh, pray for my wife. I've been trying to work with her now for about 30 years. Say, you know, we had Facebook that long, but trying to get her to feel comfortable. But she's getting there. She's getting there. But let me ask you a question since she brought me up here. Um, I thought you were asking. What? No, you know, what were you asking? About that nut that said I was crazy. Oh no, I didn't think about that. Oh, okay. I let that go. But since you brought that up, a, no. is this the first time I hear? <laughs> no. Look, here's a here's a question um, that I that I want to bring up because you you said something that was significant about about relationships, and I think sometimes we miss it because we can't sometimes transition that from here to hear our whole being and that is um when two people are in love they have such an impact on them that you feel it when they're there when you know they're not in the house and you're not sure if they're in the house your behavior doesn't change when you know they're in the house means if you know they're in the house you, you're not bringing the milkman by you're not no, bringing the, no, the hairdresser exactly. by you're not exactly. bringing none of that stuff and when they're going you don't you, you do the same thing you have that same kind of respect 
also when when you're in love with somebody any couple in marriage and those who have a have a fresh take on love or those who are in a relationship have a fresh take on love understand this that when i see that person i'm in love with they have an impact on my atmosphere when someone comes if, if it's a couple both of them are working and so when both come home they have an impact on that atmosphere when they go home because they're glad to see them when they hear their car you know some of us you know are just like still like puppets you're not anybody ever had a pet and that pet when you're going away, that pet is sitting in that window. Yeah. And when they see you coming, and they see that, that pet is up there, that window, yeah. they can't wait to see you yeah. coming. They have an impact on your impending yes. coming, your, uh, 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 um, coming home with presentation. So they, 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 one of the things I think we need to do as spiritual beings getting ready for the next level is measure how much of an impact God has on you when someone mentions his name. Because we're so we take that so insignificant. Yes. Can I be honest with you? Some of us are really not in a relationship with God. We're in a relationship with church. Mm. Now you, see, wait, wait. you know the thing that blesses me about uh, meeting another believer and one that's in love with God? Before you know it, you have to tear yourself Absolutely. away. Absolutely. Because it's like there's an explosion. You know, they right. said that 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 when Mary met Martha, said the babies leaped. Mm -hmm. When you meet another believer who's in love with the Lord, there's something on the inside of you that just begins to leap and you're edifying one another and you're rejoicing. And before you know it, you go, let me get out of the storm. Yes. I remember when um, when we were first, when we were dating and stuff, and you were so in love with me, you know what, do it yourself. And uh, <laughs> we used to talk on the telephone. We enjoyed talking on the telephone so much that we end up times falling asleep. Yeah. Phone was still up. We were yeah. asleep because we just enjoyed yeah. talking. You up. Hey, you woke. Sometimes, most times, I'm asleep, but you all sleep too. <laughs> it's already sitting there. I don't know. Why did you take it to it back? So it's on social media, ain't huh? Oh, she put out there that I'm snoring. That's about the third thing she just said about me doing. Keep going. Please, back then. Sorry. But uh, we enjoy talking to one another. And we talk just about every night. And, so, and we went to sleep talking so long about every night. Here's a problem, I, and I think for the next we need we, do, we really need to be. And you said this. When you meet another believer, you're so glad to see him. You embrace him. You hug them. You start having a conversation. You start, start, let, me, let me show you something, for, some, uh, 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 for instance. When we went down to Sanford, North, North Carolina, with Apostle and Pastor uh, uh, Smith, when we saw them, we started having these yeah. long conversations. We started talking about stuff, old yeah. stuff, new stuff. Yeah. I mean, stuff Mission just, up. we just kept talking, yeah. talking, 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 talking. And the conversation never got old. We just kept talking. And we enjoyed the conversation so much because we enjoyed being there yeah. together. It was hard leaving because we enjoyed the fellowship and it brought back so many things that made us feel good. We had common grounds of communication connection. When people are, are really connected, to God. I mean, you really have a relationship with God. This is the thing we really, we really have a relationship with God and we're really connect, connected to God and stuff. Mm -hmm. We won't be in a hurry to leave church because yeah. we like what church is presenting to us. Amen. So here's the thing I, I want to I wanna ask along with these questions. If you want to yes. Here's the things I need to ask yourself. Ask me. Ask do, you, do people get ready more for a presentation in church or they're engaging with God? Mm. Mm. See, because sometimes we want to make sure we dress right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But it's not in the dress. It's not in how you how you come. We want to make sure we smell good. That's good. We that's should good. smell good. We yes. should not be offensive to somebody's that's nose. Right. Right. And so, and we want to make sure that our shoes match what we got on. Okay. And that's good. I don't have anything against that. But do we ever make sure that what God sees on the inside really and our presentation good. as we go out to church service, the guys like it? Wow. You know, do we ever wonder is my inside makeup running? We're more concerned with make sure, and that's y'all. All things I'm saying in comparison, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't do more to make sure we're we're we're, we're, we're in the nine or ten here, and we're not doing it nine or ten here. Yeah. That determines whether we're ready for the next. And if you're really in a relationship with God, yeah. if God can keep your attention here more so than the distractions that go that's going on around you, then you have a relationship with God. But if you're more excited about the benediction. Then you order introduction, you do not have a relationship with God. And you will not get into the next. And so, so all these things you said to us, we must follow. And you know, we didn't talk, we don't talk about your messages. You don't tell me what you're gonna preach. 
But if you look at the title of what I uh, wrote about this message today, you see I talked about some things, how to heal God, how to make sure we're listening and being directed by God, because, because that's what the next is about. Now, what we have to do getting ready for this, taking advantage of this message is, let's get into a real relationship with God. Let's not just let's not just take church. You know what? I can stand in a garage all day long, and nobody's gonna call me a jaguar. No. no. Nobody's gonna come up and call me a jaguar. Nobody's gonna put twenties on me. Right. They're gonna say it's still about flowers in the garage. So y'all coming to church doesn't make us a Christian board relationship. It's all engaging into what church is offering us and applying that makes us a Christian in the relationship. Amen. This next is can't be fooled. This next is not something that we can just show up and say, here I am. Yeah. Just like you can't go. If you don't work for DuPont, you can't go on DuPont and stuff and get a check. Y'all heard me talk about it before. Only if you're employed by DuPont. You can't get a check from God for the next if you're not in a relationship and employed by God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. That was a part of flowers. Hope you enjoyed the message. If you enjoyed the message, please share it with someone. If you like to sow a seed into the ministry, not into me. Well, if you want to sow a seed into me, I will receive it. I bless. I, you know, God bless you. You can do it at my armor back there. Armor bear back there. Put up two thumbs. If you want to sow a seed, you can certainly do it by dollar sign F E D C twenty twenty. I think my daughter's putting it on the screen. She's putting it on the screen. Amen. Uh, we just thank God for you listening. Share it if it's been a blessing. God bless you.